magic show now. It's gonna be a whole different kind of show than you guys expected. How are you guys? I'm gonna wait until the smoke clears, but I'm just gonna trust there's people out there because right now, I don't really see much of anything. I am so privileged and honored to be here today. This is kind of crazy that I'm on this stage because like many of you, I have done a lot of different things in my business and my career, and some of you might know me better as Coach Glitter. At this point, I really need to change my first name to Coach, last name to Glitter, and I do answer to that. Just don't call my husband Mr. Glitter. He doesn't like it. I've been working as a professional makeup artist and a stylist and a branding expert for the past 17 years. I've had the honor of working with Shalene Johnson. I'm gonna learn how to use this thing. <laughs> I'm good with the makeup brush. There we go, it works, magic. Oh look, it is magic. The magic cards. I've worked on a lot of shows and I've worked on some videos that you guys might be familiar with as well. Something called Turbo Jam and Turbo Fire and Pyo and Shalene Extreme. But I was always the person behind the scenes. I love helping other people feel confident and feel so beautiful in your own personal way. I don't think anybody should look like Barbie if you're not Barbie. I want you to be your most powerful self, and that is what my goal is. I love helping people find what their brand is. I love helping, and that word, are you guys a little bit scared by that word? And I'm sure you've heard it a lot this weekend. But it is so essential for you to know what you're about because what we do when we first start out there, we feel a little bit like a fraud. And so just three years ago, I decided I'm gonna stop watching everybody else crush it on the online world and in social media. And I said, why not me? I'm gonna do this too. Because I realized, even in the career that I've had as a makeup artist, and I love production work, I've worked on a lot of really fun, cool stuff. I realized that I kind of have been capped on what I could accomplish, and I wasn't okay with that. How many of you guys want to achieve so much more in your life, and you know that God has given you so many talents that you have not yet tapped into? And I knew that existed in me, even after doing what I've been doing for 17 years, I knew there was more. And so I've been watching everybody else, amazing people. I mean, social media hasn't been around that long. It hasn't been that long since we had AOL dial-up. And so Facebook, I mean, even before Facebook, we all started with MySpace, then we migrated over to Facebook, and now we're kind of on, I mean, who doesn't love Snapchat, right? I really want those filters to walk around with me everywhere I go. I really miss the butterflies right now. But social media is constantly changing and the opportunities that are there are so amazing. They didn't even exist a few years ago. And so I saw that opportunity and I said, why not me? Why can't I do something other than what I know, even though I loved it, it's not like I hated it, but I just had a cap and I knew that I could serve more people versus what I was able to do one-on-one, -on -one, belly to belly. How many people can you work with if you can only work with one person at a time? I can only style one person at a time. Unless I learn how to do makeup with both my right and my left hand, I wasn't gonna be able to work on two faces at the same time. So I had a limit to what I can accomplish. And I had already reached a salary cap and I was getting really tired of driving to LA and back from Orange County where I live through horrendous traffic. And so I said, I'm gonna jump online, I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do. But like many of you who are starting out, the beginning stages, you're not supposed to know all the answers. You're supposed to be confused. As entrepreneurs, as successful entrepreneurs, you must be a problem solver because you don't know all the answers. And so what I did when I first started just three years ago and I decided to create a new business online, that I was going to just figure things out one step at a time. And I did what a lot of people do. Raise your hand if you feel like, I'm gonna look at the people who are crushing it. I'm just gonna kind of copy what they're doing because it's working for them, but it's not you. And I didn't feel authentic. 
And so in the beginning stages, I looked to the people that I wanted to be like, and I wanted to be an online business coach. I knew that I had talents that I could take from my prior experience and help people leverage their business online. I didn't know exactly how I was gonna do that, but I was gonna figure it out. Well, I looked at the people that I respected, people that I knew up close, and then many people that I knew from afar. There's like the Marie Forleo's and Shalene Johnson and Chris Carr, all these people who are in the online space, amazing, respectable women. And I just kind of copied what they were doing and I didn't feel like me. And I was kind of a, a phony and I wasn't authentic and I didn't know what to share. Have you guys ever felt that way online, that you're sharing things, you're speaking, but it's not the real you or it's not the full you. So if you look back on my Instagram photos from just a few years back when I first started, it was a lot of shoes, it was a lot of wardrobe, it was a lot of makeup, but you didn't get to know hardly anything about me. All you knew was that I like sparkly stuff, but you didn't get to know me, and I was really scared to open up, so I kind of just did what I did, and I started to just build my, my following, but it was really slow. I was about six months into my new part of my business where I'm transitioning into a new business, and I realized, I don't really feel like I know what the heck I'm doing. And I had a small coaching group at the time. This is barely six months in. It was my very first coaching group where I actually had people who wanted to work with me and get to know some of the things that I could teach them to leverage their business. But all the while, I really still felt like I'm just mimicking what everybody else did. And I was a, a, a mishmash of what I see the people that I looked up to were doing. I got an email out of the blue. And this email was from someone that I had greatly respected when I first started my career. She had found me on Facebook, and she said, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? You're a business coach now? Do you think like you're an Instagram star? Your talents are in makeup. This is someone who had mentored me in the early stages. I had assisted for on the first television shows that I was on. And she called me out and she said some awful things. And because I was feeling like I'm not being my authentic self, I'm not sharing who I really am, and I'm just emulating the people that I wanted to be like, I believed her, and it crushed me. And so I stepped back for just a little bit, and I allowed her to take over and decide for me that this wasn't for me, that I wasn't good enough, that I, I really was a phony, that I didn't have anything that I could help other people with, and I believed it, and it stopped me in my tracks. That email, punched me in the gut, and I took a break. So I stopped posting on social media, I stopped posting on Facebook, I stopped posting all the shoes on Instagram, but I still had that one first coaching group. And that first coaching group could have been my last, but because I was obligated to spend time with them and to finish my time with them, just out of my integrity that I had, I finished with them. And in the end of that time that I worked with this little coaching group, my very first little coaching group, I realized that email was damn wrong. I had the ability to help people. I was able to help them with their business. I gave them clarity on what it is that makes them special and what makes them stand out. I gave them the jumping start to figure out what it is they're gonna share on social media. And guess what? I didn't know all the answers either and I was figuring out those things. And I decided you don't have to be completely prepared with every single answer. You don't have to be an expert at what it is that you do. You don't have to be the world's leading expert. You just have to know that you're sharing what it is that you know in real time and being open. Because business is not easy, but it's also not impossible. And people want to know your struggles. People want to know the truth. People want to know not just the good things, but the stuff that you've gone through. And so that is what I do. I lead by example. And had I let that email stop me, I wouldn't be here today. I would still be schlepping my gear from gig to gig, working on too many darn housewives, 
and that's not that glamorous. I would much rather be here with you guys who are world changers, who are sharing what it is that you do that's so special. And some of you guys don't know what that is yet, but that's what I'm going to teach you. Are you guys excited about that? Yes! Are we tired of watching, looking at these photos? <laughs> so, I picked myself off the floor. I literally scraped myself up off the floor and I said, that email is not right and I have helped this little group of people and it was all that I needed to know. You don't need millions of fans to love you. You just need to focus on who you can help today, one person at a time. And then when you do that well and your intentions are to really help people, that's how it starts. It creates a snowball effect, one person at a time. And then they tell somebody else how awesome you are and how you made a change in their life. And then it has that bigger snowball effect. Don't quit. Too many people give up before you discover what it is that you are so amazing at that nobody else in this world can do the way you do. And you've got to believe it, especially on those tough days, especially when you're just six months in and you feel like you're mimicking everybody else like I did because you will make that breakthrough. So I asked myself after I scraped myself off the floor, why not me? Why couldn't I do this? There isn't something that much more special in the people that are crushing it. Why not you? Why not the people who are just beginning in their business or you're just now saying, this is not a hobby for me anymore. I'm gonna take it more seriously. This is not something I wanna fiddle around with or dabble. I'm gonna be in the front row next year, yes? yes. You have to believe that. And so because of my first little group and my second little group, and now nine groups later, I have coached over a thousand people in the last two and a half years. And those people are my wife. <laughs> you have the capability to help people and change their lives. So don't dismiss your greatness because you have something amazing. But you're like, I don't know what it is. So let's talk about that. What the heck is it? Well, while I was building this business, and again, I love this saying. Have you guys heard this saying? Entrepreneur years on social media is more like dog years. What you can accomplish in a year is like what you can do in the corporate world in 10 years. How freaking amazing is that? And so I've only been doing this for barely three years. But I've been diligent, and I've been consistent, and I picked myself up when things got rough. 2016, huge game changer with Facebook. How many of you guys are using live video already? Yes? How many of you guys feel confident with what you're producing and putting out there on live video? Raise your hands. Loud and proud. Yes. Well, prior to Facebook, we had Periscope. And that was just a year and a half ago. So again, entrepreneur years are just like dog years. A year and a half ago, I was only a year and a half into my business. When I got on Periscope, it changed everything for me. Again, it's not about being popular, it's about finding the right people. And yes, my numbers grew rapidly, and I threw myself out there. My first few live videos were terrible. I was probably sideways, I dropped my phone, I didn't know what the heck I was saying, and everything was reversed, and you just have to get through the jankiness, and then you figure out how it works, and then you find your voice. I started doing just 30 videos. You're like, 30 videos? Yeah, I like to challenge myself. You guys do challenge groups? Well, I did 30 videos, you guys do 30 workouts. <laughs> so I did 30 videos in a row and I did not give myself the option to quit until I got through the 30. In the first 60 days I did live video, I had surpassed the numbers that I had worked so hard on Instagram. What I accomplished on live video surpassed what I did on Instagram over three years, and I showed up every day on Instagram. The possibility of what you can do on live video is huge. This quote from Mark Zuckerberg, who is your BFF right now because he is delivering to you on a big old silver shiny platter this opportunity to build your business, and not enough of you guys are using it correctly, and not of you guys, too many of you guys are too scared to do it. So I'm gonna help you with that today. So he said this in 2014, in five years, most of Facebook will be videos. This is prior to live. 
Look at this. Look at the bottom left-hand side of that photo. Videos have 135% greater reach compared to a photo. This is why my beautifully styled, I mean, I would hurt my back because this is how I style my Instagram photos. I would lay them out, and then I'd have to do some squats, and then I'd have to stretch my back and stretch my hamstring, and then I'd have to get over it, and then hold my ring light, and then make it really pretty, and then use 15 filters, and then I would get, you know, 85 likes for all that effort. But when I started doing live video, I could then infuse more of who I am because for the first time, my audience got to see who I was. I'm more than just sparkly shoes. I'm more than just the clients I work on. I actually can help you and people can see you. Video does not lie. You have to be the real you. You can't be phony, but guess what? There's also no expectation of perfection. So people pull for you. They want to know who you are, but you got to show up with a game plan. Are those statistics from five years ago? No, this is happening right now. Facebook Live? only came about in March of this year, a few months ago. And in March, it had only been opened up to the people who had a blue check mark. I don't have a blue check mark. It's really hard to get one of those blue check marks, but a lot of you do. And then the rest of us got Facebook Live. So in months, just a few months, this has been available. I know there's glitches. I know there's glitches right now, but you know what? We work through it because again, I need you to picture Mark Zuckerberg in your front door at your home with the giant silver platter saying, build your business. I'm giving you live video. It has the biggest reach and you don't have to pay for ads. Don't boost your post. Do this and you're not doing it. So working with all the coaching people that I had in my groups, as well as just my own experiences doing live video, because really nobody's an expert at something that's only been out for a few months. I don't claim to be an expert. These are just things that I'm sharing that I learned along the way as I'm figuring it all out in real time. But I also realized these weren't just unique to me. These were also the same stumbling blocks that so many people in my coaching groups that I was working with were also facing because this is where the booty kicking side of my coaching, by the way, that's what they call me, a booty kicking business coach because you really want a business coach that pats you on the head and says, good job, you're doing great, and you're not. You need someone who's gonna tell you what to do, when to do it, do it, and show up, or I'm gonna kick your booty. So. These are the three common stumbling blocks that so many of the people that I was working with faced. And it's common, you're normal, you're human, it's okay, I'm gonna show you how to get over it. So not knowing what you should be known for online, AKA your personal or your lifestyle brand, that word I swear scares people because we've overcomplicated it so much and I'm gonna show you how simple it is to figure it out. The next thing is not knowing what to talk about, the topics that you should share because honestly, no one really wants to know about the peanut butter jelly sandwich that you ate unless you can make it a really interesting story and then they might. And the last thing is the fear. The fear is so real. I had fear over it prior to two years ago. I had never been in front of the camera. It was my very first video that I made to create my email list, to build an email list for the first time that I had ever stepped in front of the camera. I had always been the person behind the camera, making the person in front of the camera that I was working with feel and look amazing. And so when this awkward girl, who is so much more comfortable bossing everyone around behind the camera, got in front of the camera, I decided I have to just show up and I have to do it because I want to reach more people, and I did. Recorded video is even better than just photos. But what's even better than recorded video is live video. And it was the biggest game changer to my business. So I want you to think of your brand just like a magazine. I call this the magazine blueprint. This is where people get so many aha moments and light bulbs and they finally are like, I know where to begin. You just need a jumping start point. You just need to know where to start. So I want you to look at these two examples of lifestyle magazines. You have Shape Magazine and you have Oprah Magazine. You are a magazine. I want you to think of your brand just like a magazine. What would you have on the cover of your magazine that you would share? Because you are not just the bag of superfood goodness that you sell. You are not just the DVDs that people get from you. You are so much more. And once you share more of what makes you amazing, aside from what it is that you sell, 
that is when people are gonna really click with you. So Shape Magazine, yes, it's a fitness and health magazine, but they share so much more. Their articles are not just about fitness. They share about beauty. They have fitness tips, yes, but they also have easy recipes. They have relationship advice. They have fashion advice that's not even always about fitness wear. It's so varied. And because you are just like a lifestyle magazine, you're not gonna just share what it is that you sell. Because guess what? There's a lot of coaches out there and there's a lot of people from other businesses that do a lot of selling and they get hidden in the Facebook feed or unfollowed, and they don't build their businesses because that is not the formula for you to reach your success. The same with the Oprah magazine. Look at the topics. This is how you figure out week in, week out, what it is that you want to be about. And as you share more, you're going to gain so much incredible insight as to what your audience wants more of and what they want less of. So once you have this framework, you're always going to go back to this. It doesn't matter where you are in your business. You will always go back to what is my magazine blueprint and how has it changed? It's going to continuously evolve. What you know about yourself today will completely evolve. You are going to be like Gumby. You must be flexible with your business because so many people wait to take action until they already know everything and that's not how it works. You figure things out by taking action. When you don't know everything, you know just enough to take that first initial step. So your magazine blueprint is who you are. It's your online reputation. It's how your customers and your team members would describe who you are, what you do, and what you're about, and why others should follow you. It doesn't matter how varied your topics are. So these are just examples of things that I share. It's a lot of randomness. But aren't we kind of interestingly random that way? And let me tell you, when I don't talk about the things that I think I should talk about, that is what my audience wants more of. My bone broth conversations are the most popular conversations I have. Bone broth and thyroid issues and adrenal issues, not the shoes, not the makeup, and not always business. Sometimes they come back for more for that, but you just don't know, and this is how you gain audience insight as to who it is that you're attracting and what it is they want more of. So all different things, and again, in the beginning, you must experiment to see what it is that resonates with your audience that they want more of. And the more action you take, the more clarity you create. Because if you're sitting around, waiting for signs, other than Mark showing up with your opportunity to get on live video, this is the only sign you're gonna get, so take action. The more videos you do, the more you're going to gain clarity. And how do you come up with your content every week? Do you guys know the power of a good brain dump? I brain dump my heart out every single week to do everything. I brain dump when I have a new creative idea. I have a brain dump. <laughs> where Everyone becomes five years old when I say brain dump. Um, <laughs> Any new idea, any new business endeavor, any new action that I want to take, it starts with the brain dump. And so every single week, especially if you have not done too many live videos, you want to do a really good brain dump and you want to get all your ideas out and let it be random. And then you're just going to pick a few of the topics that come up and you're going to test it out. You won't know until you test. This is the funny thing. This is the secret sauce. You want to find the sweet spot because a lot of the things that you think are going to be the winners, whether it's photos on Instagram or it's your live video topics or a recorded video, any content that you create, oftentimes we're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm going to go share about bone broth. And then you come out and you're like, I have the most amazing recipe ever. And then it's like crickets. And then you're like, okay, let's try this. I think this is going to be really lame. But you do it and it ends up being the winner because we need to figure out what our audience wants. And it's not always what we think they want or need. They teach us. And the only way that we will learn what they will teach us is by putting ourselves out there. You gotta think edutainment. So something that I have learned working behind the camera is that everything is a little bit more flat. Any of you who have been in any of the Beachbody DVDs, you can't be in front of the camera 
doing the moves the way that you normally would in your living room because it looks like you're on sedatives. You have to really push through and you have to really follow through and you gotta smile a lot and you have to make all the moves just a little bit exaggerated. Now, on my video, you're not gonna act like you're somebody else, but you're gonna bring your A game. This is your show. This is your opportunity to be the real housewives or house husband of whatever city you live in. This is your broadcast. And so just know that how you feel and how it transfers on video is a little flat. So you wanna be educational and you wanna entertain. You wanna give people a reason to tune in and watch you. You wanna give people a reason to stop whatever it is that they're doing in their day so they stop and listen to you. That's how they give you a chance. If all else fails, on those days, and we always have them, it's so common. We're like, I got nothing today. I don't know what to share. I'm having a bad day. I'm having a bad week. My brain dump. I'm a little clogged up. I couldn't think of anything. I know. I turned five years old, too. Go back to this. Because ultimately, this is what we do. This is why we do what we do. People are insecure. Give them confidence. People want to feel special. Sincerely compliment them. People desire a better tomorrow, show them hope. People need to be understood, listen to them. People are selfish, speak to their needs first. People get emotionally low, encourage them. People want to be associated with success, help them win. Yes? Real quick, I want to talk about fear. Fear is real. When I read this book, it changed everything for me because I was holding back on a lot of things that I wanted to share out there, but I kept on those negative things kept on coming up. I'm like, I'm not good enough. I'm going to wait until I lose another 10 pounds to do more videos. I'm going to wait until I feel worthy enough or I feel like I have enough experience to put myself out there. And it was, all those excuses were just fear. So, and I love this quote, fear is supposed to be there. Fear is not a bad thing. Fear is what keeps you from running out into the middle of the road and you look left and right. Fear is allowed a seat in the car, but it's not allowed to touch the dang radio and it is up to you not to let fear drive the car. You drive the car. So instead of using your finite amount of energy to fight off something that's supposed to be there, just recognize that it's gonna be there and you're gonna do it anyways. Change the way that you look at fear. And the best news is no one is born with courage and confidence. They are skills. They are skills that you can develop. They are skills that come with practice and time. And what have we talked about today? You got to take a lot of practice and you got to do things consistently to gain those answers. So what I really specialize with all of my clients is visual branding. And that's simply how you package yourself. It's everything that people see before you get a chance to even utter a single syllable. And so it's how you package yourself. It's what they see in the background. So if you're talking about success and you have a giant pile of laundry on your dining room table, and that is real life, but does that exude success? I don't know, maybe it does for your audience, maybe it doesn't, but those are things that you need to ask yourself.